Hey everybody, it's Sydney here. I wanted to touch on some things I've been looking at, which um, I need to clarify some things about me. You've always seen me do stuff, comment generally on some things, but there's some specific things that I know a lot of people won't like about me if I say them out, particularly that one, I don't believe that CD cross-dressing is any kind of relation to being in trans gendered. Now I understand transsexual is in the realm of transgender but it also has its micro um, its inner order of TS you know, transsexual and then of course you have the entire realm of TVs which I believe also fit inside the same category CD sets in because while it is um, as they claim back in the 90s till halfway through 2000 to 2005 when they started developing the new order of things um, and I'm not saying that this is what it is now don't forget you and like a million other people vote on this thing just by talking about it every day whether people are in specific groups or people are inside or outside or whatever does not mean I do not appreciate that everyone from CD, TS, TG, trans um, vestites all the way across the board I don't I don't believe anyone should get discouraged for being who they are and I'm not exactly a you know everyone should just go out and be crazy no I'm actually quite conservative when it comes to everything which is kind of crazy if you ask most of the people who are liberal in the direct meaning um, specifically, well, my point being, my point being is that I classify myself inside of the TG realm. I am not transsexual. I do not go ahead and sexualize myself. So I'm in this minority that doesn't get all worked up physically, chemically, maybe possibly, even spiritually, um, though I do actually get my enjoyment from a person, um, direct. Um, I, however, am monogamous in my relationships, um, particularly the new one, the one that's been going on for three years, plus change and will never ever end because I have purchased full rights to this person by way of marriage and um, not rights in the way you know I own her or she owns me or anything like that because I'm not getting into the sexual side no we appreciate each other even if we don't have any sexual contact which is what really, you know, tickled me, you know, pink, as it were. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and clarify where I am. Not judge, I'm not judging anyone. But I thought it'd be important, after a, so long a period, I've been on Facebook since probably... 2000 no 2004 and a half and I've suspended my account a few times which reset the timer but I've been there uh, as for YouTube a lot longer as of 2004 I was on YouTube even though I could not record myself and upload anything in particular I first posted somewhere in 
the late 2005, early 2006, walking while, uh, while videotaping myself. It was kind of odd, if I think about it. But um, I have a lot of followers that still remember that first video, and they tell me every once in a while, you know, hey, yeah, I remember, you know, you going doing this and saying that, and not to mention the name change. And I said, well, that's important because the name change was what made me understand that that was the difference. That was the difference between them, them in complete contrast of public and government all recognizing me as me. Um, my ex, um, she went ahead and uh, brought this technically to my uh, face with her fist that she owes me no rights to her comic which I co-created uh, because I legally changed my name after we had started the comic. The truth of the matter is that if I were to get a lawyer, any competent lawyer, would walk all over that. I would have rights out of the wazoo. In fact, every year when she goes and sells it at conventions, she really, really could be sued for a million dollars. Every time she goes and sells it, it just adds up more. You know, she should change her comic. Change it from Chaotic Kiss to something else and definitely change the main character's name from Sydney to Alawasia or something, you know, like all her crazy little diaries on her shelf. She probably threw those away too. Um, but um, the thing is, is that when you change your name, it means more than anything to you. Because you, you may not mean anything to anyone. I wonder where that came from. Um, until you change your name. Anyway. So, keep that in mind before you create anything with your name on it. Um, if it's your name, you need to fight for it first. You need to get it on paper. You need to go ahead and make sure nobody sticks it in a hole. Um, I know one of my friends, with my first name as well, uh, had a big lawsuit about how her sex trade stuff was going to go ahead and be sued upon because it was considered a business instead of a person. Very important in the TS community, especially with cam whoring. I, I say cam whoring because it's a nicer term, I think, I think, than um, prostitution over the internet. And the truth is, is that you're not really prostituting yourself out if you're on video, uh, even if it's live. And that's my opinion again, just opinions. You know, it's just like me. <laughs> so, uh, on on a little bit more of the topics, uh, going back to the main one, is um, the TG factor and the TS and the labeling. It doesn't matter. Because while it matters to you personally, it does not matter in the whole circle of people that you're going to in, be in contact with. You could have someone as very perverse as you could ever dream they could be and be the best friends with them and yet you're not anywhere close to it uh, you could be friends with the most blandest not sure of anything type of person because well this is where transgender kind of inflects the CD and this is where I understand where they come from in the pre-2005 uh, paperwork, you know, integrating transgender into a big bubble, uh, including TS and TV and all the rest. Uh, they, 
the category that because oh jeez jeez my brain just flickered that's another problem with me I have momentary amnesia um jeez that sucks I haven't recorded all this and now I've gotten blanked um let's see if I can catch it myself okay how CDs that is cross-dressing people are influxed into the transgender community and the transgender definition pre-2005 before they started changing things a little more and again is that people are naive you are naive when you started out I was naive when I started out all these special people that we see on YouTube you know Tranny Star Galactica they didn't exist seven years ago seven years ago they didn't even know maybe that they were trans I mean not in the in sense that they didn't feel like it because well I felt like it all my life just like almost everybody that you are or you know or you've talked to we felt it all our lives there's something wrong or something I think used to be wrong you know and so something different about us and yet that's how we found out because we kept looking we looked for ourselves we looked for others like us and some of that is very sexual and that's where the TS comes in um, the naivety let me jump back cross-dressers have naivety one they're afraid we was afraid I was afraid we were a lot of us were really afraid unless we somehow hid everything from these um, these drag queens or gay club people and hid behind some other label for a while and didn't understand it so we hid it we until we figured it out heck we could have been in major major relationships gay relationships straight relationships kids dogs parakeets yes parakeets I know a friend of mine had a parakeet it was funny oh you know you don't expect a parakeet um but the naivety is because we all are not born in a society heck we're not born in a world we're not even born in a world that has a possibility of sharing the kind of wonder wonderful people we are uh, the closest people are are hydras in India and everyone's shaming them lately uh, they've been shamed for billions of you know tons and tons of years so I'm pretty sure that this is just a little bump on their road uh, I do I do love that they persist to be themselves in some ways I also detest that they develop the idea of bringing people in as like the second son of a household is turned into a female because they don't need another heir and that's where that's where they you see the kind of forced trans people um, but they still fit under the trans community because well one they need the protection of the trans community which oh is lacking because of you because of me especially me I'm not going to go ahead and lay the blame anywhere else I absolutely cannot do anything to help besides talk on this I have put people up on beds and made my life a living hell I have called help centers 
I have called homeless shelters, double checking, triple checking things, helping people find houses, other things like that. But all I can do is talk. I can't get them in a house. I can't just go, hey, you know, where are you? I'm going to come by and pick you up here, have a new life. We don't have that. And when we don't have that, we don't have anything because we're taking that step into the void every day. <laughs> You're 60, by the way. The 60 year olds that are watching right now, I want to let you know that while you have this very harsh story, it's harsh, I, I know. Do you realize that we're in a different harsh environment? Just the same kind of harsh environment that you had to deal with. And um, while we have PTSD of sorts about these things, me, you, everyone who's coming out lately, as well as everyone in the middle, we have this stress, this post transitional or pre transitional, pre knowledge issues of um, why. Why have we lost our entire families, our entire lives, our jobs, our dogs, parakeets, and cats? Um, there's a lot of loss in taking the decision to not hide yourself and lie to everyone. I mean, because sometimes I, th I wonder if any of these people understand that, I mean, I guess it might take somebody going out there and saying, you know what, I am transgendered, I know I'm transgendered, but instead of transitioning, I'm going to lie to my wife that I just married. I'm going to continue to lie throughout my entire life, and I'm going to teach my kids to hate people like me, so that when it comes to seeing someone on the street like me, they can shoot me, or stab me, or beat me. That never comes up. You want to know why that never comes up? Because that would be just self, at well, that would be that would be homeless homicidal in the relation between the things. So I think about this kind of stuff. And, and, and yeah, it gets a little dark sometimes, but I have I have my light and that's that's my life. And I'm really, really happy people can find people because we are out. We exist in the world. We make national news because we're here. We were here when the gays were here. We were here when the blacks were here. We were here when we just got here in America. That's hilarious, isn't it? There's probably a transgendered freaking guy on the boat when Columbus sailed. It just, it's that funny. And how many, how many of us, uh, how many trans people, uh, female to male, went on to ships and went ahead and bound their chests, you know, and worked hard and become burly men because of the sea spray and their bodies just worked with it because they, they just, exuded it. I gotta tell you right now, I see a lot of F to M's switching over like it's some kind of software or a light switch or flipping up a cell phone. So I, uh, I'm really proud of that. I'm proud of F to M's as much as I am about M to F's and, um, and all the special people who I forgot to say, like asexual people or genderqueer. Uh, if you want to go on the sexual side, the polys and the, um, well, there it goes. 
must be because it's like 3.42 in the morning that I can't remember all the specifics, you know, of groupings. But I want to let you all know that I do love you all. And only as much as, uh, of course, my girlfriend slash wife now. Well, not slash wife. She is my wife. <laughs> Sorry. Newlywed stuff. Can't help it. Um, and I really can't help it. I, I give a giggle every time I think about it. Uh, especially since I never thought I was going to get married to anyone. I thought I was going to end up on the streets in a hole. But you know what it took to go ahead and survive all that? Accepting being called him. Accepting that I will be constantly called my birth name until they die. And then I'll have to deal with their death. And all that comes with it. Because I can't afford to live on my own. Heck, even my wife and I now, together, cannot afford to live on our own. And it's not because we don't have money. It's because this world is not yesteryear. It's not yet. It's not last year. It's not the year before. It's not the 90s. It's not the 80s. And this place called America and probably the rest of the freaking world has changed. New world, new rules. New rule is find your best place to live. If, you, if you're not getting along with that person, move on quickly because that person is not going to help you any further than you allow them to stomp all over you. I, there's a lot, a lot of narcissists in our groups, in other groups, and a lot of straight groups too. They will accept you and then they will go ahead and walk all over you. There is, of course, the help that you do get in the meantime. So remember, if you're on the outs, I just want to let you know there are numbers to call. There is the internet to see. It is free to get online at public libraries. Find one. They will let you in even if your hair is purple. Even if you're in the most confusing, confused uh, state, city in the world. I live in backwards Kansas where, hello, if they knew I was trans, yes, they would egg my house, they would set fire to our farm, and yes, I would probably be running down the street quickly. Okay? It's not a joke. Just for being strange, we were chased out of my house in town. We were. It's Kansas. Whether you're in Kansas City, Wichita, Hayes, wherever, that's our major prospects here. It's Kansas City's up in the north. Uh, Lawrence is right below it, which is a really gay area. Um, there's Topeka, but Topeka has all the crazy people. Um, not including you, but you're crazy to stay there. Um, then there's Hayes, which I don't know too much about, but I've heard quite a few uh, P-Flag stuff is there. And I, I've been seeing a lot of Kansas pride going around. Uh, if you are able to socialize with them, they'll help you. If you're not, just keep trying. Do your best. Uh, as for any of the other states, the same rules apply. You don't find the right place, move quickly, okay? Because you don't want unwanted issues, okay? If you find the cheapest place in the world and you can tolerate all of the problems that come with it, keep with it, because you're lucky. Some places cost upwards of $2,000 just to get into a trailer, a single wide trailer. And of course, that's Kansas. And uh, some of the counties some of the counties allow you to actually live inside of a cardboard box for $100. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, I found that out, that one of the counties near me allows people to live out of cardboard boxes and, play, and pay uh, the landowner $100. <laughs> it's great. Oh, but the um, 
the old rule of, um, oh, what was that? Squatting? Yeah, squatting. It doesn't exist in Kansas. They moved it off. Uh, there's a lot of other places that still have it. I don't know. But that's about it for now. I think I should say goodnight. It's coming up 4 o'clock really quickly. And, um, I don't know. I might get dark again. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at, um, a group on, uh, the internet where the label is CD, but it's supposed to be, uh, let me see. It's supposed to say transgender discussion. It's not transgender discussion. It's transsexual discussion. And CD does not, it's kind of all over the map. You know, but hey, tomato, tomato, right? As long as it goes ahead and creates social interaction. And that's what the world's all about, social interaction. If you don't socially interact, you're the one on the outside, right? So interact, even if it's just me. I'm here. See my social networks. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I am on YouTube. Uh, I'm sorry if I am not on any of the others, like MySpace. I was on Yearbook, but it got a little crazy when they changed owners. And um, otherwise, you can get me at my at my blog, which is Paper Sydney Anna at Blogspot.com. Nice to see you, and I'll hope to see you around again. Talk to you soon. Have a good August. Bye-bye.